Joe Trippi, Democratic political strategist and CNN contributor. Thanks for joining Tech Republic and ZDNet today. Uh, in the political world, many people understand and respect your uh, uh, use and understanding of technology. You had first mover advantage on a lot of tech tools. Uh, but for those in the business tech world, uh, can you talk a little bit about your background and history, especially going back to 2004 and before uh, with direct mail and leading up to the Howard Dean campaign? Uh, well, first, great to be with you and thanks for having me. Uh, gosh, it goes back a long way before Howard Dean. I, I installed the first computer, I think, in a, uh, in a political campaign back in 1980 uh, for, a governor, uh, for a governor's race in California. Uh, but along the way, uh, got sick of politics in the late 80s uh, and uh, went out back to uh, the Valley, Silicon Valley, and worked for a lot of e-commerce and cybersecurity-based uh, uh, firms. Uh, and I think that gave me enough of a intersection between politics that I'd been working in all that time and technology that I... I guess I became sort of dangerous in, by about 2003, where I knew enough in both worlds to, uh, to be you know, a pretty big disruptor, I think, in the political realm, in the Dean campaign, um, where we, you know, I think, pioneered a lot of the, the that primitively back then because of where the internet and where technology was, and YouTube didn't exist. There wasn't, most people didn't have enough broadband or bandwidth, I mean, to, um, to do video online and things like that. But with it, we, I think we shook up uh, at least the Democratic side of politics that year. Uh, and in a sense, I think, you know, that's uh, as technology evolved and as its tools evolved and as more in politics uh, understood how powerful uh, use of those tools and empowering people was, uh, it, you know, it grew to the Obama campaign and, and now to Trump. Uh, who, who use social media in ways that, uh, that most campaigns hadn't done in the past. What did you learn about the advantages of the grassroots and communicating directly with the base as opposed to using the media as a, or, or legacy traditional media as an arbiter? Well, I'd always been, as a guy who worked in media uh, for campaigns, as a media strategist, always been frustrated by the, the one-way nature of it. So back in, I think it was 92, I had, uh, I think, was one of the first uh, to uh, 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 use the 800 number <laughs> as a, a primitive way to, you know, hey, call us back, let us know what you're thinking kind of thing. And we, we, it was for Jerry Brown's race for president. He we ended up winning, uh, running, uh, I think, uh, uh, fundraising numbers of $8 million by people calling the 800 number. But I've always been frustrated with it. So I think one of the things about the 2003 2004 effort with dean was finally there was a way to empower people uh to not just preach at them but actually get them to own the campaign and its message and to help help move that message out there to their friends family and coworkers. um and in 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 a sense you know the whole 2003 2004 dean campaign i think was almost a naive idealistic um uh, hey, we can empower people. I thought that's where uh, it would go. And by, you know, I don't know, 10, 12 years later, it's uh, it's just as manipulative, if not more so than television. Yeah, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, it, this is a, an interesting time for data and particularly social media. In 2008, uh, the way President Obama used data was kind of champion or, or social media was kind of championed. Uh, and that was repeated in 2012. Of course, we saw in 2016 a really interesting uh, evolution of the use of social media. Um, now there is a narrative that social media might not be that great. What are your fears about uh, technology and data? Well, yeah, I thought we were gonna, it was going to help us have uh, conversations together that would bring us closer together. Instead, it's, cr it's pretty uh, obvious that... Uh, people are siloing, and uh, where they get their news is siloed, and and who they talk to is siloed, uh, and it's actually helping drive us apart, not not pull us to, together. And I think that's that's something. It, it that's one of the reasons I think companies are becoming more more 
uh, alarmed by it because they don't want they they want a medium that pulls us together. They want to, they want both sides, you know all sides of uh, to buy their product or to use their service. Uh, and I don't think anybody solved not on the political side. This is one way where maybe we can get uh, we can learn from uh, 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 from business. Uh, how do you uh, uh, how do you uh, how do you use this medium to bring people together is going to be a bigger, I think no one's figured that out now. It's, it's driving apart, not the other way around. Yeah. So dovetailing with that, uh, what do you anticipate? What narratives do you anticipate? And uh, the realities uh, do you anticipate through the 2018 and 2020 cycles? Well, it's look, here, here's where this is go. You know, and I don't want to get into the Russia stuff in terms of, you know, the grand conspiracy with Trump, okay? But w what we've done is we've created this this immediate pathway into messing with our elections. Uh, you can start a phony site, uh, America's, uh, America's uh You can put uh, uh, stories attacking uh, the Republican on it or the Democrat. Uh, you can have a Russian bot farm uh, pushing that out. And, uh, hey, I'm for Hillary Clinton, um, and this is a bad story on Trump, so let me, a real human being uh, and an American, uh, that's a great story I want to move around, and vice versa on the other side. And you could just have a blast of getting Americans on social media carrying weaponized messages against the other side against both sides uh and i'm not uh, this is what I'm, I'm not getting into did it impact the last one and you know etc but it's clear that that's i mean you used to have to trick uh nightline into putting some russian commentator on uh, on the air uh at, at 11 o'clock at night to get your your message across if you were if you were trying to prop get put propaganda into our system um, and still, most Americans didn't take what happened on Nightline and run out in the streets because they knew where it came from, um, you know, good or bad, whether you believe that or not. But right now, uh, you, have, you have other people using the data, other people uh, who, uh, from outside uh, who can get bo both sides in America's polarized politics and in these silos that we're in to attack each other and attack the candidates and lose trust in each other. Uh, and I think that's a driving thing um, that's, that is happening, clearly happening. And I think we're woefully, because of our openness in our society, which we all cherish, and the openness of the internet and all these tools that I and others so uh, were excited about, you know, 10, 12 years ago, right, exactly, uh, that, how do we go from this, wow, yes, we can share all this information, we can talk to each other, and at the same time, and be that open, and at the same time have these, in have these other forces trying to use this to, to, to play into our divisions and, 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 and divide, divide all of us. Um, and I think it takes, it's gonna take an awareness of each one of us that when we're seeing this information, where did it come from? Why am I, you know, why am I so excited about pushing it to the next level? And then, you know, then it comes from Joe Trippy to, to Dan, and you don't know where it came from. I mean, and, and it keeps going. And it, it, it's those ripples that worry me more than the initial uh, targeting that's going on. Uh, last question, Joe. Uh, it, this seems almost rhetorical, but we are, regardless as to how you feel, uh, uh, from a partisan perspective, uh, American institutions are under attack from adversaries who work to undermine faith and trust in institutions. Uh, should massive corporations, SMBs, startups, should companies be concerned that the adversaries that have targeted government will next move to targeting uh, uh, Western enterprise? Oh, no, no doubt about it. And in fact, I think it, that was going on before the attacks on our, on our elect, you know, sort of political institutions, right? I mean, I think, I think there's all kinds of evidence that, uh, 
uh, uh, patents were being, ideas were being stolen, it's uh, hacked, companies were, but companies don't talk about that. I mean, they're not going to, you know, they, they try not to hold a press conference saying some of our best ideas just got stolen by a foreign, uh, you know, by a foreign hacker. Uh, it does come out occasionally, but I think that's been going on for a long, long time. I think uh, uh, in the public discourse, it's, it's like the Dean campaign, um, there, you, you know, there were, there came a time back then where we could implement stuff, but we, it didn't quite have the power that it did by 2008 or 2012 or 2016. YouTube didn't exist. Twitter didn't exist. Uh, the iPhone wasn't out till 2007. All those uh, evolutions of the tools, um, just as, as the, those trying to disrupt, just as we were trying to build this uh, uh, engagement with people, those same tools have opened up a way to disrupt and divide, um, and they've got they've gotten more powerful too. So by 2016, 2020, uh, the you know the ability to disrupt our institutions, break up trust, uh, and, and I think attack more companies and, and businesses out there, not just on a U.S. scale but international scale, uh, is going to keep evolving. Uh, faster than, I mean, the, the disruption that we've seen, I think, is only the beginning. It's going to get worse. How do we adjust to that? How do we, uh, uh, you know, find some mechanisms to slow that down, to stop it, or to at least understand how we're all being manipulated in ways that you couldn't, it'd be much harder to do on, on television, on the old broadcast networks that, uh, that, that we we assumed we're propaganda machines, but nothing like uh, what we're quite living through right now in this new environment that we all created and all wanted. Uh, we're excited about what it would do to make things better. Will we keep allowing it to make it worse, keep us more divided? That's, I think, the, the whole fight right now and where I think a lot of people should be thinking about, both in corporate and in, in, in our democracy.